Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel, Joe Knows Adventure. And today we're doing a ship, trip, and port review, including embarkation and disembarkation and my trip home on my wonderful cruise from London to Copenhagen. All right, so let's get started. All right, everybody. First, we're going to talk about the ship. I was on the Norwegian Getaway. The Norwegian Getaway is uh, one of two of the Breakaway class. Uh, we have the Norwegian Getaway and we have the Norwegian Breakaway, which both are very similar in style, just different painting on the hulls. And of course, uh, they have the same venues, the same not the same entertainment but they have the same dining areas and stuff and then you have the breakaway plus cruise um, which include the encore the bliss the joy and the escape those are a little bit bigger um, they have a few different things on there that, that the other doesn't have like um, mostly the observation lounges which uh, are very nice on those ships but i've been on all those ships as well so I'm what you consider a Norwegian girl. <laughs> I like Norwegian Cruise Line. So um, we were the last um, group to be on this Norwegian getaway before it would go to dry dock for upgrades. And my understanding was some of the upgrades are going to be, of course, repainting the hull. Um, it was starting to show its age, the carpeting. Uh, rewiring some of the, um, not some of the, rewiring the rooms to include the um, the, the uh, USB-C ports, and a little bit more port charging areas for your phones and equipment. And um, another thing that everybody is pretty excited about was the, in the casino, having a, um, a walled off area for smokers. And so that was uh, something that I guess a lot of cruisers had uh, mentioned if they wanted to do something for the upgrade. So they're going to be doing that. So our voice does matter, right? I flew into uh, London Gatwick. Um, I, I booked my flights through Norwegian. Um, I know, I know there's some people that have good reviews about booking flights through Norwegian and some have bad reviews but I haven't had one problem at all a solo traveler so um, although second person flies free what they advertise as a solo person I still get like half off so it's worth it to me I have not had any problems with uh, arrival times changing planes or anything like that um, I on this particular one they I flew um, JetBlue, which I'd never flown JetBlue before. I was quite impressed. And um, they their hub is in uh, Gatwick. So flying into London Gatwick, I flew in a day before. So arrived and got a taxi over to the hotel and um, had a wonderful stay there. I took a train down to uh, Brighton just to do something in the afternoon. Got back and I pretty much crashed. Uh, jet lag. And the next day, um, because I wanted to book my transportation through Norwegian, London Gatwick would not allow me to go back into the airport in order to catch the transportation for Norwegian. So I took a taxi to London Heathrow and got uh, the transportation through Norwegian to Southampton. So embarkation day was pretty seamless um, other than I took the taxi ride. It was about an hour um, drive and with tip it was like 95 bucks. So it was worth it to me, uh, a little expensive, but um, you know, I just booked through Norwegian. It just, it just peace of mind that I would get to the ship. Um, they, they really did this well. You, you go into the, um, the, um, 
arrivals hall and Norwegian assigns you uh, according to your first in uh, you know by order and you get a little sticker that coincides with uh, your bus so okay bus number one so all the all the ones that that sticker color would go and so we went out and the buses were waiting for us but if we had carry-on we kept it put it in the bus but if you had or whatever you were going to take on the ship but if you had the big luggage they loaded that up into a, um, a truck trailer and they just piled it all in there and you wouldn't see your luggage again till it went to your room so I thought that was great because once we got to Southampton all we had was our our handheld luggage or whatever we were taking on the ship and our carry-on so to speak and went through the process of uh, getting your room card key card and checking in and we were pretty much on the ship and ready to go about one o'clock and um, depart uh, the Southampton was seamless uh, it was a little cold and windy uh, some rain um, so other than that it was kind of nice to get on the ship and and start my journey all right let's go to the first port stop all right everybody our first port stop was um, Le Havre France and this is like the gateway to Paris but on this I chose excursion through uh, Viator and I wanted to go see Normandy D-Day beaches and since this year 2024 was 80 year um, celebration so to speak or remembering 80 years ago when we um, D-Day so um, I, I thought it would be special to go uh, since I was there for this year it was on my bucket list a very sober um, experience we arrived at 6 30 in the morning and our all aboard time was 8 o'clock at night uh, departing 8 30 so we had plenty of time either to go to Paris or what we did to go up to Normandy um, got to see where they landed the landing beaches the the cemetery the um, uh, just the tour guide was wonderful explained everything to us and I just really really enjoyed it and um, just just a, a wonderful experience a heartwarming experience and to see what our men went through um, to uh, you know to free for freedom um, so that was a, a good experience I really really enjoyed it really suggest that to go even if you're in France and you're touring to include Normandy as one of your excursions or if you're going on a cruise and you land in Le Havre and you've been to Paris take that excursion because it, it's really really a good one all right next port stop All right, next port was Zabruj, uh, Belgium, which is a gateway to Brussels. Um, on this one, I chose um, to go to Bruges, the city of Bruges. Um, I booked this through Norwegian, and it was uh, Bruges on my own. Um, we arrived at 10 a.m. in the morning, and all aboard time was uh, 7 30 departing at 8 so um, just plenty of time to either go to Brussels spend the day there um, but what we did was we we had a bus and the bus took us to the entrance to Bruges we all got off they told us to meet there um, at a certain time so we could go back to the ship to be on time and I just had a day to myself I really really suggest going to Bruges it's a it's really a neat neat city um, lots of stuff to see got to have a waffle got to have chocolates you got to take a canal ride and the churches there are, are wonderful the history is wonderful 
So I really enjoyed it. Um, I will be going to this port again um, in September. Um, uh, my cruise will be London, not London. My cruise is Iceland to London. And so I have this uh, port will be one of the ones I go to again. So I will do this again because there's a few things that I, I did not do on my day there that I plan to do again. So I'm looking forward to that. So highly suggest this, this unique little uh, town. Ah, next port is Amsterdam. Amsterdam is another port that I'm going to repeat on my cruise in September, but um, I will be doing something different on this one. Uh, we arrive at 8 in the morning and um, we uh, all aboard time is 6.30, departing at 7. Well, arrival was 8 o'clock, but because of the, you go through locks in order to get into Amsterdam port, and the the canal traffic was quite busy so um we were supposed to be docked at nine and we were still pulling in so um it was it was late which made the excursions late and i booked my excursion through uh, norwegian and um, instead of going into amsterdam i booked marken and volendam which are two fishing villages. Uh, because we were late, it made Mark and a little, I don't want to say rushed, because it is a small uh, fishing village. It's a, it used to be an island, and they built a uh, like a dike to go so that it connected the mainland. So um, very interesting, but you have to walk to get to the fishing village area, and we were walking like that. <laughs> Okay, you guys got so much time here, but but Volendam, another uh, really neat fishing village or marina there, uh, we got a lot more time there, so I felt like we got our our excursion worth time there. So not bad at all, and uh, we had a good good tour guide and um, gave us plenty of free time um, in Volendam. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to um, seeing Amsterdam, though, on my next, uh, next cruise. So I'll be able to see um, a little bit more of the city itself. And, but I wanted to see this knowing that I was going to see Amsterdam again on my next port. All right, next port is Oslo, Norway. We uh, arrive at 8 a.m. in the morning and all aboard time is 4.30, departing at 5. So on this one, I decided to do the hop-on, hop-off bus. Um, I booked the hop-on, hop-off bus to uh, Viator. So very easy, not expensive at all. I didn't know what to do in Oslo, honestly. Um, it, the port is open and it looked like once I arrived you could see where you had to do a little bit of walking if you wanted to go into town on your own. Um, I suggest taking a tour or a bus or a hop on hop off bus. Um, if you do the hop on hop off bus, plan your day a little bit because I, I chose to go through the whole route and then go back again and get off where I wanted to get off. Uh, in doing this, I went to Vigilant Park, which, oh, if you're going to Oslo, you got to do the Vigilant Park, uh, either through a tour or on your own like I did. Um, fantastic park. Huge, huge, huge. Lots of statuaries there, a fountain, and the history there. Um, it was really calming, I think. I spent about two hours at the park, just walking the whole park. And but in doing that, I got back on the on the uh, hop on hop off bus, and I wanted to go. There were some museums there that I wanted to see. Um, a lot of museums in Oslo, and I wanted to see these. But by the time the the um, hop on got there for the second time around, 
um, it was kind of late and I thought if I got off I would I'd be rushed to go through the museum and then have to hop on uh, or wait for the you know almost the last bus and then go so um, I, I missed out on that so if you're going to do the hop on hop off bus plan your time and uh, in that because it's you really don't have a, a long day even though it's from 8 till uh, 5 um, by the time you get off the ship and you get onto something you you know it's 9 30 10 o'clock and then your day just it, it goes fast it really did and I got back the port had um, like a tent and it had uh, people there like little stalls and that's where you could get the souvenirs if you just got off the ship so wasn't a lot of big shopping area but um, it was very crowded uh, to do a little bit of shopping and um, that and people were rushed even so because you had to get back on the ship so anyway I enjoyed Oslo I'm not saying it was a bad port it just um, just do your time just see what you want to see and and you know I think the museums are something you want to see if you're going to do Vigilant Park plan your time there so that's you know maybe not do it like I did and spent you know, <laughs> was there a long time I just enjoyed it it was just a beautiful park and like I said I'm showing some of it here through this so all right next port I butcher these names, but it's Us Denmark, and um, we arrive at 10:30 in the morning, and all aboard time is 6:30, and departing at 7. And um, a really unique um, uh, port. I chose to. Um, I booked the Rosenholm Castle with uh, Gam Estrup Manor and Garden and I uh, booked this through Norwegian so got on the bus had a wonderful tour guide she is a little bit of a, a ride out to the castle but she kept us entertained talked to us history um, of Denmark and uh, just it was really good and when we got to the castle it actually had a moat all the way around it and um, the, the people that have, they still live there and, and the family is I get generations um, old photos and uh, paintings and tapestries and um, just really really neat history of the of the um, of the castle itself it was like starting here and went around and um, I just I really enjoyed it and then from there we got back on the bus and not too much further away uh, we went to a manor house which was a museum and, and turned into a museum and so we got to see pretty much the lifestyle of, of uh, a home um, but a very old home and it's pretty much the way it was then as it was back in the day and it had the um, the like the rooms were like they were they had uh, the clothing on mannequins and um, just very interesting very very uh, great history and then of course it had a garden out there acres and acres and um, I thoroughly enjoyed that plenty of free time to uh, do the museum and um, had some free time outside got back on the bus and went back they did um, stop if you wanted to uh, do a little shopping um, if anybody that wanted to get off the bus they could um, but I, I didn't want to do that because that meant I had to walk back to the um, well they had a shuttle bus I guess that would take you back to the ship I just didn't want to get confused because <laughs> she was telling us where to catch it and stuff and so a few people got off but the rest of us just took the bus back and um, got back on the ship and um, it, we had a, a, a good day and 
a, a fulfilling day, I think. So I highly recommend Rosenholm Castle. It was, it was a good experience. Wurtemunde, Germany, gateway to Berlin. And we arrived at 6.30 in the morning with all aboard time at nine o'clock at night, uh, departing at 9.30. Um, this, I had been to Berlin when I went on a Baltic cruise. So it's, it's a three hour um, bus ride there, time there, three hour bus ride back. So a lot of people chose to do that. Um, but because I'd been there before, I wanted to, uh, to see the city of Vunamunde, and that's what I chose to do. It was on my own. I didn't have anything booked. So um, we got there that early in the morning, like I said, 6.30, so a lot of people were already off. I slept in a little bit and had a nice breakfast and took my time, walked around the ship a little bit, and then got off and walked um, down to the um, city. And uh, real easy walk to get there. And um, you walk along the strand like you're along a canal. And then you walk, there's a big lighthouse you could climb up to. Um, the beach area is wonderful. A lot of, uh, a long, long beach area, beautiful beach. And I just, I walked the whole thing, and then I um, caught a little train that, I, I think it was six euros, and it took you the, almost the same path that I did, but I just took the train, walked that around, I drove, rode that around. I had a bratwurst and a beer, and from this little stand, and oh, that guy, he made, it, he made his own, the, the buns and delicious and must have been good because there, the line it must he must be well known because there's a line there so I chose to do that and then they had a ferris wheel which I'm afraid of ferris wheels but I chose that I'm going to be brave and I did it and um, I, that was neat I got a really high up view of the ship got great pictures of the ship of the whole area there and so it really was a great day. And even though the people um, we had till 9.30, I got back on the ship about four. I uh, went back and took a little nap. And then when I got out, I guess we had had a, a downpour because it had, everything was wet, but the sun was out again. So I, I said, man, I'm glad I got back in time before the downpour. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been soaked, but it was it was a good day, and I had um, uh, a nice dinner that night. So it was just an enjoyable day in Budimunde. I, if if you don't go to Berlin or if you've had Berlin before, take the day to do that. It, it's great. It's a great place for kids, especially the beach and um, the little train ride is fun and a little bit of walking around. But um, all in all, it's a it's really a nice little city. Next port is Hamburg, Germany. And um, some people went to a, a town of Ghent, G-E-N-T, some of the excursion there. Some went to Hamburg. But I booked through um, uh, Viator Kiel, K-I-E-L, Germany, which is a old uh, UNESCO World Heritage um, site. It's a very um, uh, uh, old, old um, city with wonderful architecture. And we had the bus ride that um, got on the bus and it took us about, oh, about 45 minutes to an hour to get out to the uh, uh, city. And we got off the bus and we had a tour guide meet us there. And he was so good. We we really enjoyed that. Got to see the um, Lions Gate, what they call, and um, the city's known for its seven uh, spears or towers from the churches. And um, 
it was just really good. We we had a good day. Um, tour guide took us through, and then he gave us some free time. And if we wanted to meet back, he would continue on with whoever wanted to meet and go off into some other places. Or you can have the free time until we met again. So I did the free time for, um, it was about an hour, and then um, met up with him. There was another couple that uh, walked along with us for a little while, and then they took off to do something else, and then he continued on. So it was like having my own private tour guide. So, which was nice because I was able to ask questions and, and get to know the history of um, this really wonderful wonderful city um, great history and I love the history of anything so it was good to good to see it highly recommend um, this uh, city and um, it's a, a the medieval times and the age of the city is is amazing you know we don't know what old is here in America <laughs> We say, oh, it's only uh, from 1800, or well, oh, it's only from 1600, 1700. But these guys, well, they're going way back. Crazy. All right. All right. So we're in Copenhagen, our um, disembarkation. So I'm going to show my disembarkation, a uh, little bit of video there, and... Um, then I'll, I'll jump in here for a little bit. Well, good morning from Copenhagen. We are in dock and today is Wednesday, May 22nd. This is my travel day and I'm heading home after a wonderful nine days. This has been an amazing cruise, guys. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed every bit of it. I, I can't complain about one thing. Um, I will give a full review, but this will be my disembarkation and flight home. And then on a separate uh, video, if unless I add it to this one, it depends on how long it is, I'll uh, do a review. And um, But be sure to go back and look at each day that I was in port. Um, I did each day. So this um, will be one of the last uh, ones that I report on. But anyway, um, I got up early at six o'clock. They're docked. Um, we're waiting for the call uh, to uh, disembark. Um, mine will be around nine. So I have some time. I'm gonna go down and um, I think I'm gonna go into the Tropicana, which they're offering breakfast this morning. So I think that's where I'll head. Um, but this is what I'm wearing today. I'm probably going to be a little warm, but I wanted to wear the bulky stuff uh, for my uh, suitcases. So I have a sweatshirt and just jeans and Skechers slip-ons. So if I wanted to take them off in the plane, I can. Like I said, it's going to be a long day. I travel from here to um, Munich and Munich to Chicago where I um, go through customs and then Chicago down to New Orleans. I plan to be at New Orleans at 11 o'clock tonight. So like I said, it's gonna be a long day because um, right now we're seven hours ahead of New Orleans and um, it's just gonna get worse. <laughs> so It's like 11 o'clock at night right now. But like I said, this is uh, Wednesday. Um, okay, so I'm going to, um, I did this a little bit last night, but I will do a little bit again. I'm already packed and everything. Um, everything is um, put away. All the closets are empty. So nothing hanging, nothing down there. Always double, 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 triple check everything. I There's room under your, your beds for your suitcases. So I already looked under there to make sure there wasn't anything left. And um, 
you know, my makeups I'll put away. So I do have my uh, Leah Sophia bag. This is very light. I don't have that much in it right now. I just, um, I've got my books. I have a, a container so that I can put water in there, my passport and money information. And um, if I take my glasses off, uh, I have a sunglass case, but if I take my glasses off, if I wanted to rest or anything, I have a glass case. So not much in there. And then this is my Rick Steves duffel bag. Now I try to put as much as possible in the suitcases. So the large one was um, 44 pounds and the smaller one was 35, I think it was. And so this one is just really light. And what I like about it is it rolls but because I have two suitcases, this has got a thing that goes over the trolley handle or the suitcase handle. And then this becomes a backpack. So I can slip this on my back and roll the two large roll the two large bags into the um, airport. And that way, all I have left is this this bag here and the rolling duffel. Um, yes, I do pack a lot, but you know, I went through all my clothes, and the only thing the only thing I did not wear um, this trip was um, I had another pair of slacks that I was considering if I needed to wear uh, some black slacks and a blouse, but I chose to wear this today. Um, I might buy a t-shirt um, just to carry, just in case I get hot. I don't know. Um, it, this depends. It, I just wanted to be comfortable. I have a sports bra on, so, you know, it's all about comfort. And these are not binding pants. They're, you know, there's plenty of room um, so that I'm not going to feel tight. And I really have not overeaten uh, this trip, so... I feel pretty good about that. I've done a lot of walking, so I don't think I'm gonna be uncomfortable on the plane, um, but it is what it is. <laughs> so also they do, and I went over this last night, but they do give you um, tags that you can put on your suitcase. So they're, they're pretty much on time for starting today. So like if you're a priority or yellow, um, which I'm yellow, but um, I don't need to get off that early because I have transportation and mine is red three. So that's the one that's going to the airport. Now there's several going to the airport. There's one at 745, one at 830, one at nine, and one at 930. And then finally at one at 1015. So these are the buses that are going to um, the airport to drop off passengers that have flights out today. Quite a few people take a bus that goes, a tour bus that goes through town, takes them either to the hotel or it'll take them to um, the airport. And uh, some people are staying over and they have an extension with Norwegian. So that's where the bus will take them. But usually it's a tour through the city and then they take you to the airport. Um, I have done that here. Um, I have seen Copenhagen. I stayed three days before my Baltic cruise. Um, um, and then I stayed um, one day after um, just because we got back so late and my flight was the next day. So anyway, I had um, a good time. So I'm going to go to breakfast and I'll take you along through the day. Um, I don't care for Copenhagen's airport. Um, it's a little different, but it'll get me home. So we'll we'll get get going. All right, guys. So I got to Copenhagen the airport, and um, we left on time. It went to Munich. Got to Munich. We left on time, and we headed to Chicago. Um, we got to Chicago and the 
the airplane traffic caused us to be on the tarmac for a long time because there was the planes were late getting out of the gates because they were so crowded because planes were coming in and it was just a backlog so we we were waiting and i'm going oh because I, I originally had like two hours before uh, my flight well it was eating up that two hours so you're coming in international you get in and you have to get off the plane and then you have to go and you collect your luggage and you walk through and you go through customs and then you drop off your luggage unless that's your final destination but I had to get onto another plane you put your luggage in and they're shuffling it through because it gets sorted and taken to your thing and then you got to walk through and you go through um airport security again so you're like TSA where you they, you go through and oh my I was eating at the time I said man I'm I'm gonna miss my flight so I hadn't even gone to the bathroom yet honestly and I was just like oh my god I gotta gotta rush well I'm on the other side of the airport so you have to get on a train and you're going all the way over there you get off I'm going like this. I'm sweating bullets. And I look up. My flight was delayed only because the plane that was in the gate couldn't get out. And my plane couldn't get in. So it ended up being an hour late. So whew, I was okay. <laughs> I just got, I was just delayed an hour. I was home an hour later than I planned to be. But all in all, it was, it, it was an easy flight. The, the food was good. Uh, I flew Lufthansa, um, and then once I got to Chicago, I flew United home. All right, so what's next? Next up for me is, um, of course, I have a weight loss uh, update that I'm going to be doing, and then I'm going to be doing, all through the month of August, um, cruise hauls, um, pack with me, getting ready, you know, prep with me videos um, because I will depart here on September the 3rd, arrive in Reykjavik on the 4th of September, getting on the ship in Reykjavik, Iceland on the 5th, starting a wonderful journey uh, down uh, two more ports in Iceland, Esfirador and um, uh, what's the other one? Um, the Safir door in Akuri, Iceland, and then we go to Alison, Norway, Geringer, Norway, Bergen, Norway, um, Amsterdam, like I said, I was going to do again, and um, uh, Brussels, Belgium, which is another city of Bruges again, and then uh, ending up in London. So I'm looking forward to that whole excur excursions and trips for you guys. So uh, look forward to sharing uh, another cruise with you. All right, so here we go. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share with anybody that may be interested in cruising or anything that I have uh, presented. And comment of course i answer everybody's comment i really appreciate the comments and of course if you haven't already subscribe i'm trying to get those subscribers so i can get to a thousand i oh, can't wait but everything you do even watching the video all the way through helps that algorithm so i hope you do that give me uh, that thumbs up and in the meantime I will have to see you on the next video. You guys, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're being safe. And see you on the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.